Welcome everyone to Hillcrest Connects, where we briefly want to share with you what it means to meet together as we catch a glimpse of what God is doing in and through our congregation. Today we have with us Candace Meyer. She's one of our Bible study leaders on Wednesday night. Also, she's been a part of this church, her and her family, for about four years now. Candace, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. So share with us a little bit about how COVID-19 has affected your family. Um, actually, it's been quite the positive experience for us, surprisingly. Um, we have had, we have two older daughters who have moved to Calgary. They moved there two years ago um, for school and work and stuff like that. So when all of this kind of went down in March, they, their business was shut down um, where they worked, their school was shut down. So they moved home right away. And just having them back and all of the kids under one roof has really um, impacted our fa family dynamic because we kind of got into the habit of just having three children instead of our five. Um, and for me as a mom, to be able to see now my two adult children um, in my home and finding the balance with that, allowing them to be adults while still being my children, that's hard for any parent, I'm sure. Um, but one thing I have been grateful of is, um, although this has impacted my business, I own um, a wedding and event planning business, so the wedding industry is taking quite a hit this year. Uh, we've had quite a few weddings postponed to next year. Um, but secretly for a few months leading up to it, like January, February, I'm typically not doing as much business. Um, and I kind of had this desire to go back to being a stay at home mom, because that's what I did before. I didn't launch my actual business until my youngest one had started school full time, because then what was I going to do with my spare time? Um, it just took off so much, and I hadn't quite thought about the fact that when you're in an event planning business, um, your weekends and summers are booked solid because that's when people are <laughs> planning their events. So for a few years now, I've been longing for this desire to go back to just um, taking care of my family and going back to those roots, which really was what I wanted to be when I was a young person. I just wanted to be a mom. Um, so I'm so grateful now that the plan that I did have in place, which was to kind of cut back, cut back, cut back, so in two or three years, I would just have a few events. It actually fast-tracked to be this summer. I actually have all of this time to be able to cook with the same love and passion that I used to and, you know, take care of them the same way. So it's been a blessing in that regard. Can you share with us or tell us a little bit about what you've learned uh, about having adult children at home? Um, so it's been a balance. Um, like I mentioned before about allowing them to, to be adults, um, they still have a high respect and regard for my husband and I, and I'm grateful for that. So they do come to us and ask us our opinion on things. Um, but the tough thing now with them being at home is when I see them in their process of making decisions and I'm thinking, oh, I don't do that. Don't, no, don't. <laughs> Knowing when to be silent and let them go on their journey themselves and when to actually say something to spare them um, pain or frustration. Um, it's, it's that balance, you know what I mean? So it has been great just not very many parents when their adult children move away have them come back for a period um so i've i've loved that yeah. and i missed that yeah. um because i know soon enough they will be gone again so i'm really soaking this in but i can't be mother hen so you're enjoying it are your kids getting covid fatigue are they tired of this yes and no so the schooling has been really great, actually. The teachers have been doing a fantastic job with providing the resources that they need and making it e easy on us as parents to be able to transition from what we would have been doing with our jobs or adult interaction to be able to now help our children. And they've been gelling again as, a f as five siblings. Yeah. 
the three youngest kind of always tended to congregate together and then the two oldest. But now the oldest have been, I think they've realized how much they've missed their younger siblings because they'll take them out and color with sidewalk chalk on, on the driveway and stuff like that. And, and one of our neighbors actually came out and said, hey, if, if you want to color on our sidewalk, you're more than welcome to. So it's been great for them to be able to do those kind of things and participate in family walks and that kind of stuff. So we've just altered heard the things that we used to do as a family we used to do more elaborate outings you know going to Calgary for a day or Lethbridge for a day or whatever now our outings are a bike ride or going for a walk or whatever so we've really simplified things and that's okay and they're learning that that's okay so I'm curious about how you're you're used to teaching um, a small group on Wednesday nights mm -hmm. what does that look like now we have been connecting through texting and messaging. Um, Facebook has been great too because um, our youngest, our 11-year-old, um, she loves coming to the Wednesday nights. Even though it's a lot of um, older like adults, she loves it and they love her. So they've loved being able to see pictures of us on Facebook and that kind of stuff. And we can see pictures of them um, connecting in that way. So it really has been this let's try and find other ways outside of just Wednesday night. Because that's what it can turn into sometimes is just this habit of getting together. But now when that's taken away, what are we going to do to continue our relationships? So sometimes it's phone calls, sometimes it's just a short message saying, hey, I missed you today, or how did this, uh, how did your grandson handle this, and you know, that kind of stuff. So you shared with us a little bit about the importance of placing God in the forefront in your lives. Is that something you can relate to the congregation, or are there some words of encouragement you want to share with congregation? I think for the most part, if if you try to see, and this is something that we tell our kids all the time, if you look for the good, if you look for the lesson, um, if you look for what God is doing through this, it actually has a beneficial effect on you. Um, it's really easy for us as human beings to always look for the bad things and how this is going to mess us up and oh, there goes those plans and whatever. If you start trying to make a deliberate effort to find the positive in things, find the lessons in things, you're going to take a lot more from it than it tried to take from you. Candace, thanks for coming in and thank you for sharing with us today. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. And thank you for joining with us. If you haven't already, we encourage you to sign up on Realm, follow us on our social media sites, or visit us at hillcrestchurch.net.